Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode, we are talking about this stack of Kino Lorber Studio Classics titles. This is, uh, Kino has just put the button on another sale. They've just wrapped up another one of those epic sales that we love to talk about. A great time to fill in your Kino collection. Behind me is over 200 Kino Lorber Studio Classics discs, uh, and that's a great time to stock up. This is two orders from that sale and an order that predates that sale. Just that I paid regular price for. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, and, um, you know, we love Kino Lorber because, uh, well, you know we do, we cover them as often as we can. There's a playlist with all of our Kino Lorber coverage. Uh, they have such a wide range of genres and such a diversity of like science fiction, drama, silent movies, horror movies, genre movies. I mean, they really do it all. And that's one of the things that I love about them, and I think you're going to see that as we go through this stack. So let me just jump right into it. Uh, on the same day, I think all three of these came out on the same release date, we got three George Poppard titles. I picked all three of them up. I'm a big Poppard fan. And we're kind of we're experiencing a little bit of a Papard renaissance because so many of these companies, like there's a lot of Papard hitting at the same time. There's, I think, two more George Papard movies on the slate for January from Kino Lorber. Uh, anyway, let's start off with PJ. I've watched all three of these movies. PJ is like it was made just for me. Um, by the way, before I go any further, let me address if it if this looks if this video looks a little different, sounds a little a little different. I'm trying a new camera. I'm trying a new microphone. I'm just always looking for ways to to be the best at you know give the best presentation possible. So that that would explain that. Uh, PJ is a 1968 detective movie, but it's like it's like it's it's like half of it is James Bond, half of it is weird like the French Connection. I mean this this weird like I mean it literally is like half of it too. The first half of it is it's jaunty like jazz music, uh, very globe trotty. A lot of it takes place kind of in the Caribbean, and then it goes back to this cold reality of New York. And there's uh, this brutal kill in this movie that's straight out of a horror movie. It's like invol involves a subway train. Um, what a wonderful movie. I, I absolutely adore this movie. It's got Raymond Burr. If you ever wanted to know what it would be like if Raymond Burr, Perry Mason, played a James Bond villain, that's what we get in PJ. And so I just had a really great time with this. I'm going to try to kind of go through these kind of quickly because we've got a lot of ground to cover here. Uh, the Ground Star... Here, let me hold it like this. The Ground Star Conspiracy. This is... Um, it feels like a made-for-TV movie. That's not a knock. It wasn't, as far as I know, it was not a television movie. Uh, but it does have, like, it feels like a television production in the sense of, like, the, the choices of a lo location, the way that they shoot the movie. These are not knocks, as I, 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 I hammer that point home. Uh, it's just a different approach. It feels smaller in scope and in a way that... I don't know, it's kind of cool I mean, for, for people like me who grew up with the television of the 70s. Like, I'm really into this. Basically, it's kind of a kind of a, a born identity sort of a thing. There's this guy who has been charged with this with this crime, the, the ground star conspiracy of the title. And he doesn't remember, the, basically, like, there was an explosion. He doesn't remember being responsible for the explosion. And that's kind of just this plot of like finding out who he is, where he comes from, what are these memories. Uh, and Papard plays kind of the heavy in this. And in, in, in PJ, he's the he's the the rumpled detective, sort of in a long line of rumpled detectives. You know, going back to the uh, I mean the Raymond Chandler stuff, and then going through. Um, I'm thinking of like Harper, like Paul Newman. Uh, it just, there's a very, I guess it would continue into Columbo and the Rockford Files. Like he's, the, the private detectives are always down on their luck. Here, totally different, totally different kind of a role. It's kind of a step closer to, uh, I mean, look, I know he's moving to TV in this era. We've got a Banachek era, uh, a team, not, not like super far in the future. This is 1972. Uh, so it's, it's a different kind of, uh, of Papard. Newman's Law. Now this, what this blew me away. This is like 70s cop film meets uh, I don't know, it's black exploitation maybe. It's it's a little bit Serpico. It's a little bit um, <laughs> I don't know. I try to think of like a really maybe a little Chuck Turner. I don't know. Uh, he's a like he's Newman. 
uh, Papard plays Newman, who is a, he's like the one good cop that's not on the take. And he finds himself in this conspiracy. See the Serpico influence. This is 1974. The Serpico influence feel for me, it feels like it's there, but there's also like his partner is African American. And there's this huge racial element that plays into this. There's the mafia that plays into this. This is another great one. I mean, I'm just really enjoying the, uh, the Papard triple blast that we got from Kino Lorber. And I love that they themed these releases for certain days. You know what? This is the Papard day. In a second, I'm going to show you, it was like a bunch of swashbucklers and Arabian adventure movies came out basically on the same day. Uh, but I highly recommend Newman's Law if you're into that sort of a thing. I, I think it's really cool. It's got, um, as with all these movies, you know, they'll swing from like kind of a lighter tone to like really gritty like that. And I kind of appreciate that. It's, it's this tonal discord that uh, it keeps you kind of on edge. Uh, let's talk about Gotcha. This is a crazy movie. So 80s, but so fantastic. I love Gotcha. Uh, this is one of those movies that I probably saw on TV, like a local broadcast television station um, in the 90s, perhaps. This is Anthony Edwards. I believe this is between Revenge of the Nerds and Top Gun. Uh, Anthony Edwards, Linda Fiorentino, and it's a Cold War spy drama, but it's set in... Uh, um, it, it's it's the 80s, so it has that Cold War spy drama element, but it's like a college kid who's really good at like the, the gotcha game. Like They play this game, this paintball game on campus, and it's basically... You know they hunt each other on campus. That boom, gotcha. So they're they're teaching. It's the spy game that they play in real life, and he gets embroiled in this uh, espionage plot that's much bigger than he is, and it's legitimately disconcerting. It has some really uh, unnerving, like you know, like you get taken into for an interrogation by you know like German the German military. I mean, it's legitimately like if you can, if you've ever traveled outside the country and found yourself in the customs office with people asking questions as I have, like it's not a good feeling. And we get to experience a little bit of that in gotcha, but it does remain fun. And it's got a really cool soundtrack too. I enjoyed this movie so much. I sought out the, the, the soundtrack, the record, cause this, the CD soundtrack doesn't like the, the music doesn't, um, it, it's not licensed for a CD release, so the music really only exists on uh, this vinyl album. So I had to track down the vinyl album because the theme, like the theme song, is it's like "Gotcha, Gotcha, Where I Want Ya." It's super 80s, but it's in, like in the best of ways. Uh, it's also got like like Frankie says, uh, "Frankie Goes to Hollywood" has a couple of songs in the movie. Um, and the score is by Bill Conti, who is the guy that's um, the Rocky soundtrack, and then, of course, the Karate Kid soundtrack as well, which is kind of the Rocky soundtrack. Uh, let's move on. These are some of these um, these Arabian adventure films that I was going to show you guys about. So we got, uh, in one kind of consistent blast, we got Arabian Nights. Some of these are still sealed. We're getting into some of the stuff that I haven't had a chance to watch yet. Walter Wanger's Arabian Nights from 1942. This has uh, Maria Montez and John Hall in it. Maria Montez, one of those universal, I guess both of them, Mon uh, Maria Montez and John Hall, kind of universal players at the time, late, like early 40s universal players. Arabian Nights from 1942. Uh, from 1944, Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. Um, again, Maria Montez, John Hall. Maria Montez had this really exotic, there's this very exotic quality. She's very beautiful, very, um, you know, she'd been, she, was, she traveled the world. She was a, a student of the model all over the world. And she brought this really interesting quality to these movies. Uh, I feel like she kind of just dropped off the radar as the 40s wore on. I could be wrong about that, but that's my understanding of some of this stuff. Uh, so I've watched this one. I haven't yet watched this one. I've also watched The Son... It's not The Son. Son of Alibaba with Tony Curtis and Piper Laurie. That's right. Jamie Lee's dad. <laughs> and what a weird way to dismiss most of his career. Let me, re let me redo that. So Tony Curtis from Spartacus, Some Like It Hot. Wonderful. I freaking love Tony Curtis. I'm like so interested in the career of Tony Curtis. I'm like, Tony Curtis, I have not seen you. I have not seen your career, but I love so many of his movies. It's like, again, so many of these are coming out on Blu-ray now. 
there's a, you know what, if you can see over my shoulder, there's a Tony Curtis box set back here from Kino Lorber. And uh, like 40 pounds of troubles in that box set. That's the one that I was like, man, it's just so much fun. We, listen, we've talked about these. Uh, this is, here's, here's what's interesting. Movies like this, this is early 40s Universal. They're still like, it's, it's a lot of like um, maybe American or English actors doing Middle Eastern accents. They're trying, right? I mean, there's something to be said maybe for like, well, why didn't, you know, appropriate casting, whatever. But by the time you get to this, they're like, you know what? It's Tony Curtis. It's Tony Curtis. It's Tony Curtis. And this is the movie where he says, I think the line is, <laughs> he doesn't actually say this line, but this is like the joke. Is that He's like, in Yonder Valley lies the castle of my father. And he doesn't say it like that, but he's totally from New York. Like he's totally got that accent. And he doesn't really, he doesn't, you can't really hide it. Piper Laurie is, of course, a lot of you guys are going to know her as the mom in Carrie. But uh, real classy lady, really wonderful career. And this is a cool movie that uh, shows what a what a leading lady she was and, and could play. Uh, okay, Swashbucklers. And, and again, kind of all on the same day, we get... Uh, Errol Flynn and it was Maureen O'Hara and Errol Flynn. What a team. The, the classic swashbuckling team against all flags. This also has, um, um, what is this guy? Anthony Quinn. I could not think of Anthony Quinn's name. Oh, you know, Anthony Quinn. Uh, this is a 1952 adventure film, which is actually pretty, uh, that's like, we're getting into like peak you know there's a golden age let's say the 30s of the golden age you get the adventures of robin hood you have all the you got captain blood around that time you've got uh, so many interesting swashbucklers by the 50s you're getting into that big epic thing and even the lower budget movies have a lot of stuff to offer so we're going to talk about the buccaneers girl um this is yvonne de carlo and you probably know Yvonne DiCarlo. Uh, if you aren't familiar with who she is just by her name, she is uh, Lily Munster from the TV, the 60s TV series, The Munsters. But she was a wonderful actress. She was a singer. She was a dancer. She had a lot of uh, talent and a lot. She's in a lot of great movies. I think this movie was basically written for her. And it's kind of like a uh, lady... Pirate on the high seas. I mean, look the the cover. That kind of tells you everything. It's it's the Buccaneers girl. She is the the um, the the romantic interest, but she's more than that. She's the um, the <laughs> she's our protagonist, right? And she's not relegated. I mean, she's as feisty as any gal that I've ever seen on screen. She is wonderful, and she gets to sing. She gets to fight. There's a lot of cool things in this movie. I, I really enjoyed it. It's got uh, Philip Friend, Elsa Lanchester, who you may know as the Bride of Frankenstein. Um, it's just really fun. I, I have watched this one. This was like high priority for me. As soon as this came in, I was just like, rip the shrink wrap off, pop it into the player. What a wonderful movie. And this movie is 77 minutes long, but guess what? It sacrifices nothing. It's, it has everything you need. It's got it's got its ups and its downs and its highs and its lows and it tells a really fleshed out story. Wonderful, cool pirate. Of, look, they're like ship battle scenes. You know, the the, the obvious reference for modern pirate movies is going to be your Pirates of the Caribbean, right? With these huge hundred, hundred, fifty, two hundred million dollar budgets, um, where everything's done on a CGI soundstage. Like they have actual ships in actual water and they have cannon fights and they sink ships in the water i mean it's just really fun it's really fun if you like pirates of the caribbean the disney ride not the disney movie but like the disney ride that's based on this kind of movie pirates of the caribbean the ride was capitalizing on uh the pirates films the, the traditional pirate film and that's very much kind of what this is and i just love it and i love yvonne DiCarlo. i think she's just the best uh, now we're getting into some more stuff that I haven't seen, but I'm really excited about it. Five Graves to Cairo. You guys, this is a, a really fantastic um, uh, pedigree of a film. This is one that I've been wanting to see for a long time. It's directed by Billy Wilder. It comes from a new 4K scan. Uh, this is sort of a, um, sort of a, a wartime uh intrigue i'm a really great really great drama again i i haven't watched it yet but i just i know so much about it and i know how respected it is you know i'm not doing special features on these most of these 
have a commentary. In fact, I think all of them have a commentary. Uh, Lee Gambin, Lee Gambin, Joseph McBride, uh, Philippa Berry, tons of, uh, Kino always brings wonderful commentaries. Captain Apache, we got Lee Van Cleef, um, Carol Baker, oh, so many of you guys, if you've just discovered Carol Baker via that uh, Umberto Lindsay and Carol Baker box set that came out uh, a few months ago, four months ago, I don't know, now I'm dating the video. If you're just discovering Carol Baker, uh, she's been around for, she's been on, on other, you know, in a lot of other movies, she is not limited to like a giallo box set. She's in a lot of things. And this is, uh, you know what? She's in a George Papard movie. She's in uh, The Carpetbaggers, which is a fantastic movie. George Papard and Carol Baker, both stunning in that movie. So this is a 1971 Western. And I think this is an American Western. I don't think this is, I don't think this has any European influences, but I could be wrong. Um, again, as you can see, it's I haven't I haven't gotten to it yet. It's still shrink wrapped up. But Stuart Whitman, I should mention, it does also have Stuart Whitman in it. Uh, I'm always in favor of more uh, westerns on Blu-ray. This is a double feature, an Alec Guinness double feature. Now, I don't know because I haven't watched these yet. This is a double feature of the Captain's Paradise. This is Barnacle Bill. Um, I'm closing in on. Alec Guinness's comedy work, which for a long time, I was just not familiar. Of course, I knew like, uh, was it Bridge Over River Kwai? I knew uh, um, <laughs> Star Wars, obviously, in the Star Wars trilogy. I wasn't really familiar with Alec Guinness's uh, comedy work, but of course, he comes from so much of that comedy tradition. Thanks to, uh, I gotta shout out Ronald, my one of my Patreon supporters, who had uh, sent me some Alec Guinness on disc. Now we're getting some Alec Guinness on Blu-ray here in America, and that's kind of a big deal, because this, this is not something that's just readily available, or hasn't been for us up till now. Captain's Paradise co-stars, guess who? Yvonne DiCarlo. So, that's a selling point for me. I'm a, as I say, I'm a big... Big Yvonne DiCarlo fan. So this is a double feature, both movies in HD. Do these come from any brand new 4K restorations for both of these? So that's cause for celebration. Add a little Alec to your... Hey, have some Guinness. You can add a little Alec or you can have some... Ha have a Guinness. You can have you can have two Guinnesses with this. I don't know. Um, talking more about... Uh, I don't remember if these came out on the same day or not, but we've got a Shirley MacLaine double feature. Um, the sister of Warren Beatty had quite the run in the 60s as a, uh, you know, I feel like later she would be, Shirley MacLaine, different kinds of movies, and of course the writer as well, but in the 60s, she really had this run as like the glamour girl, like the Marilyn Monroe, Jane Russell, kind of 60s glamour girl. These come from that. There's also another Kino movie, um, where uh, or another movie that Kino's put out where she plays, uh, um, the, the name of the movie is failing me, but she plays a, a bride who just keeps, like all of her husbands keep dying. And I mean, they're just like a who's who of say, Paul Newman and Dean Martin. Um, I, I'm gonna, hopefully I remember to put it across the screen right here so you know. But that these come from the same era, 1963, 1967. Uh, Sweet Charity is out as well. I believe that's from Kino Lorber as well. Sweet Charity, the uh, the the big musical extravaganza, and there's a couple of like, that has a an alternate uh, like the roadshow version. With, there's like what a what a wonderful time to be discovering some of these movies. That uh, I think were you know they when the VHS so many of these movies. That's kind of what I like to say because I think this is true. They were readily available on VHS. These would have been at your video stores, but when the video stores declined and we moved to DVD, a lot of these movies started to fall off the radar. And I think that's what you're going to see now because these movies, the movies that Kino Lorber distributes for Blu-ray, like these aren't readily often on. Netflix or you know Hulu or whatever like these are movies that just they're, they're studio classics and almost all studio movies are great they they have big budget talent they have you know they have contract players right contract directors writers uh, actors and because of that there's just always a level of competence on screen 
and they have just they just slipped off the radar and 10 15 years no one's been talking about a lot of these movies guess what 10 or 15 years is a generation of movie fans that doesn't know what these are so it's great that Kino Lorber is kind of bringing these back into the consciousness uh, the caper of the golden bulls this is one that I'm really excited to discover it's a 1967 movie uh, it is a it, it's a heist movie and I, doesn't it take place in Spain? Yes, and they're stealing some precious jewels located in a bank in Pamplona, Spain. So you've got the whole running of the bulls element. You've got a, a heist. You've got uh, 60s style and class. This is a new 4K scan, new 4K remaster. So commentary, Philippa Berry. Do we have commentaries on these? Uh, oh, this audio commentary by Joseph McBride and another commentary by Kat Ellinger. Great stuff. Uh, we're almost done here. The, by the way, some of these come from the Wild Supplies last sale. Uh, specifically, uh, I know, I believe, I know, I believe, <laughs> I think the Honey Pot came from the Wild Supplies last sale. These are the movies that uh, when the stock is gone, they're not coming back into print. Their Kino is, the license is expiring and they're going away. Uh, the Honey Pot comes from that. Rex Harrison, Susan Hayward, Cliff Robertson, Maggie Smith, Harry Potter fans, Maggie Smith. Uh, how about young, um, I'm going to be respectful, young, virile <laughs> Maggie Smith. Is that respectful? I'm not so sure that was respectful. Okay, back to uh, Street People. This is Roger Moore and uh, Stacy Keach. This is a 70, what year is this? 1976. Um, a, um, the hunting season has opened in the naked city. If for nothing else than this wonderful poster art, this, this, key art that they've included as our cover here that's really cool uh, i haven't seen this movie so i'm i'm excited about discovering this movie and uh i mean roger moore he's what like i've talked about this in some videos before like roger moore was not my bond when i grew up i i, I grew up under the reign of pierce brosnan at the tail end like i when i first became aware of bond it was the timothy dalton era and then we moved into Pierce Brosnan, and that was like my, like 90s Bond was my Bond. And then of course I go back to discover Sean Connery, and he becomes my favorite Bond. Roger Moore was always kind of the, the last in line. I mean, we're not even going to talk about Lazenby, but uh, discovering Roger Moore and the the camp of a lot of those movies like I've, I've really come to appreciate roger moore in the last few years and of course there's the tv show the persuaders that he did with tony curtis and that's great as well just discovering roger moore's career and so many of these movies kino lover has put out as well so there's he did a lot of movies in the 70s uh the last one and i think this is a good one to end on james coburn the wonderful coburn flint and like flint uh it's the internecine project now this is a movie, there's sort of like a, it's like a trilogy, right? I think there's three movies that kind of tie into the, uh, this whole thing. Uh, this is a 1974 movie and Coburn is, again, I haven't watched this yet. I haven't, so I don't want to misrepresent, but this is just my understanding. First of all, I love James Coburn. I think you couldn't, he was one of those people that was just naturally cool, naturally tough, commanding, you know, a man's man. And so I'm really interested to see uh, how this plays, uh, especially on Blu-ray, to see. It doesn't, doesn't mention a new transfer or anything like that. Listen to the cast list on this. Written by, well, it's not the cast, I just mean the, um, yeah, okay, we'll do, we'll do the whole cast list. Cast includes Lee Grant from Damien the Omen 2, Harry Andrews from Too Late the Hero, Ian Hendry from Get Carter, Julian Glover from For Your Eyes Only. Now, Julian Glover, for me, is the Doctor Who, goes back to Doctor Who. Um, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Um, what's the radio of the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? He chose poorly. Um, that's that guy. Keenan Wynn from The Mechanic, written by Jonathan Lynn, who wrote Clue and Barry Levinson, uh, and directed by Ken Hughes, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, featuring a rousing score by Roy Budd, Git Carter, The Stone Killers, The Destructors, and stunningly shot by two time Oscar winning cinematographer Jeffrey Unsworth, 2001 A Space Odyssey. You guys, I, I'm so excited about this. So that's going to do this, uh, this Kino wrap up. We've also, in a previous. Uh, new release video, we talked about the Bob Hope films, The Cat and the Canary, and The Ghost Breakers, which I highly recommend. Those are excellent films. 
we talked about. You know, I've got some of these over here as uh, we're going to do a... They're in my Review Palooza stack. So they'll be talked about again soon. So the Cat and the Canary, um, the Ghost Breakers. And did we talk about The Curse of the Undead? I honestly can't remember. This is a movie I've been waiting. I was waiting for it to come to Blu-ray in just any any release in America. I was about to import... I had a I had that DVD in my cart in like Amazon Spain or something like that. And I was just waiting to build enough of an order to justify importing that. And then Kino Arbor puts it out. And it's a great film. Curse of the Undead is a like a haunted western. It's kind of a vampire western. And it's shot incredibly well. It's a B-movie. It's a universal film from the 50s. This is a 1955, 1959 western. And that's it's 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 a B movie like it's not an A picture and you would you know what to expect from a lot of B movies but it really does transcend all expectations the script is fantastic the dialogue is fantastic the performances are great Curse of the Undead is a really special movie and I'm really grateful that we have it on Blu-ray from Kino guys that's going to do it for this Kino Lorber spotlights if you did pick anything up during this sale uh, not not just the sale. We we support Kino Lorber during sale times, and we also support Kino Lorber uh, in non-sale times because the prices are always reasonable. Most of these new releases, like the Doctor Who and the Daleks, Doctor Who Invasion Earth 2150 AD, I think that's the the full title. They were like seventeen dollars and ninety seven cents brand new on Kino Lorber's website. So. Uh, we support them in the sales. We support them. I mean, look, the work, the, the two shelves stacked with Kino releases, that tells the story. We've been here talking about Kino Lorber for years now. We will continue to be here. Uh, Serial at Midnight loves Kino Lorber. We love these movies. Most importantly, we love cinema history. And as you can, as we talked about, like Kino Lorber casts a wide multi-genre net and we uh i <laughs> am really supportive of that it's it's really special because so many other companies deal with this they deal with specialty specialties they just go hey how about any how about anything that's cool we'll, we'll just put that out so uh thanks to, thanks to you guys thanks to kino lober for putting out an incredible product take care and until next time i will catch you later